The Bible tells us that the stars are the handiwork of God in Genesis 1, 14. And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. The primary application of this passage is that the stars are meant as markers of time and space. For example, we base time and our clocks on the rotation of the planets and the stars. Sailors also traveling the seas use the stars to mark geographic positions using the stars as signs. That I believe is the primary application of Genesis 1.14. But there are instances in which the stars are not only used for calculating time and marking space, but at God's holy discretion and at His discretion alone, He has used the stars biblically as supernatural and miraculous signs to communicate His intentions towards mankind. One of the most striking examples in the Bible of God using the physical elements of the universe as a sign is found in the book of Isaiah, chapter 38. While you're turning to Isaiah 38, let me give you the background on that passage. In Isaiah 38, King Hezekiah is sick unto death, and Hezekiah turns his face to the wall and prays unto the Lord and beseeches him to have mercy on him. God answers through Isaiah the prophet and tells him that he will add 15 years to his life and deliver him out of the hand of the king of Assyria. In Isaiah 38, verse 7 and 8, the Bible records, And this shall be a sign unto thee from the Lord, that the Lord will do this thing that he hath spoken. Behold, I will bring again the shadow of the degrees which has gone down in the sundial of Ahaz ten degrees backward. So the sun returned ten degrees by which degrees it was gone down. This was a cosmic sign which declared God's intentions toward King Hezekiah. So we witness here a miracle of truly astronomical proportions within the stars, within the sun itself. Now either time actually reversed itself ten degrees on the ancient sundial of Ahaz, or perhaps the position of the sun actually changed and went backwards relative to the earth or vice versa. Whatever the case may be, a sign was performed among the stars. This is God's prerogative. He can do that at will as he did with the star that led the wise men to Jesus. And it is not astrology. God moved the cosmos to suit his own purposes. So there's a vast difference between man seeking the counsel of the stars to foretell the times and the author of creation moving the cosmos at his will to advance his providential plans. God will use the totality of his universe at his own discretion to accomplish his purposes. Now, there's a huge difference also between astronomy, which maps the law of the stars as a physical science, versus astronomy, which charts the zodiac. So, you know, I don't want to know what your sign is, okay? I mean, if, if you're a Christian that dabbles in horoscopes, you're taking part in a very wicked, satanic, biblically forbidden act, even if you think it's not real, or you're just doing it as a pastime because it's in your favorite magazine or something. You know, so if you want God to bless you, don't even think about doing such things. But astronomy as a physical science is another matter altogether. The Bible mentions the constellations, such as in the book of Job, where Arcturus, Orion, and the Pleiades are named in Job 9.9. And even the Lord himself mentions the constellations in Job 38.31. Canst thou bind the sweet influences of Pleiades, or loose the bands of Orion, says the Lord in, in Job 38, 31. The prophet Amos also says, Seek him that maketh the seven stars in Orion, and turneth the shadow of death into the morning, and maketh the day dark with night, in Amos 5, 8. 
But when it comes to astrology, Isaiah gives God's people a stern warning. Turning again to Isaiah, the Bible says, Thou art wearied in the multitude of thy counsels. Let now the astrologers, the stargazers, the monthly prognosticators stand up and save thee from these things that shall come upon thee. Behold, they shall be a stubble. The fire shall burn them. They shall not deliver themselves from the power of the flame. There shall not be a coal to warm at, nor fire to sit before it. To hear the rest of the sermon entitled King Herod and the Wise Men, click the link on the screen or visit newcovenantbaptist.org.